All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And first off today, let me just express some gratitude for you checking us out here on the Rich Mind Podcast first off. I know that there are a ton of options as far as uh, pulling at your with distractions, with different podcast opportunities and, and different conversations that are going on out there in the world. And for you to take your time out to come visit with me here on the podcast is much appreciated. It's been a, a ton of fun. I've really enjoyed the conversations that I've had with a lot of the folks and also the solo episodes. But for, first off, let me just say thank you so much for taking your time and investing it here with me. I hope that it's been a lot of value for you. And that's my intention. I want to try to add as much value as I possibly can into your life. And that's what I'm going to try to do again today with a fantastic guest. I'm super excited about this conversation. We were just chatting before we hit record. This is uh, the conversation we're going to have today is about a subject that may or may not be something you ever really have thought about before, maybe you've never even heard before. Uh, but I believe by the end of this conversation, you're going to be like, yeah, I need to know a little bit more about this. It's going to make you question a lot of possible things that are going on in your life to turn some things around into a, a positive way. But today, without further ado, let's bring on Andrea Johnson. Andrea is the intentional optimist. She believes that uncovering your core values is the foundation from which all true growth will flourish. She's a certified Maxwell leadership speaker, trainer, and coach. She's also a DISC behavioral analyst consultant. She's also a fellow podcaster, which is super cool. It's always fun to have a fellow podcaster on the podcast because they kind of get how this works, right? You can kind of <laughs> tell them, hey, here's a few of the questions I intend to ask. This is kind of what we're going to talk about and do today. And they get it, right? But that's, you know, that's neither here nor there. But at the same time, she's a fellow podcaster. And her podcast is called Stand Tall and Own It. And I highly recommend that after this conversation today that you go out there and subscribe to her podcast as well. It's fantastic content. But without further ado, as I mentioned, Andrea, welcome to the show. I'm super excited about this conversation we're about to have today. Thank you, Randy. I am happy to be here. It's always an honor and a privilege to get to talk to somebody else's audience. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's always a lot of fun. So I went over a few of the high level bullet points about you. Uh, some basic information, but I would love for you to take a few minutes and let everybody get to know you out there in the podcast land, where you're at, where you've been, uh, kind of what you're doing now and, and where you're headed. Well, I have, you know, I, I, I was born. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can go back um, that far yeah. if you'd like. Let's, let's go. Yeah, that'll be fun. I do have a unique story, though. Um, I was raised in Seoul, South Korea. My parents were missionaries, and so I'm a third culture kid. But I spent my the bulk of my career in uh, higher education, schools of medicine. I did administration, research administration, operations, working with doctors, researchers in cancer research and uh, figuring out how to get them grants. And then in nephrology research with kidney work all through the pandemic and learned along the way a lot of things about myself a lot of things about other people and a lot about how I would prefer to work with people. And I learned that I did not want to manage people. <laughs> Just, you know, managing is by definition, maintaining the status quo. And I said, I don't want to do this anymore. I had a, a few things happen in my life throughout my career, including um, a gastric bypass surgery, adoption, and m losing my mother to breast cancer. And I just hit a, a point where I said, I wanted, I want, I was 50. And I said, I'd like the rest of my life to look a little different. And so that was when I really got serious. I'd always been very interested in growth, very interested in personal growth. I was always listening to people and reading books. And uh, I don't know if we talked the last time we spoke about using the Franklin planner system when I was in college and working through Stephen Covey's book. This is not something that was entirely new to me. But I realized like a lot of other people I had gotten caught up in this idea of what life was supposed to look like or the things I was supposed to do in order to be successful. These myths that we all perpetuate, you know, I'm going to work harder and longer or I'm going to get a degree or I'm going to or I'm, I'm going to constantly be in growth mode. And the problem is, if you don't do something with those, then you've built your resume, but you don't have your experience and you've, um, you've gotten yourself bitter from working too hard, or you're accumulating a lot of information and not doing anything with it. And I hit a place where I said, enough is enough. And a good friend said, you know what, you really should look at the Maxwell team. And so I did. And five years ago in March, I was certified and 
was introduced to DISC, which is a behavioral analysis tool. It's about communication. It's about understanding how people's speech patterns work and bridging the gaps between how they work and learning how to do that in teams. But one of the things that was introduced to me as I was doing my coaching certification was being reintroduced to a value system or looking at my own values and understanding core values versus business values. And that's what really got me started on my path. So I work with teams, um, small businesses, and even teams in larger businesses but I love, love, love working with individual leaders, be they, you know, millennials or Gen Z at the, the beginning of their management career or the beginning of their entrepreneurial journey. I, I just love working with people, helping them figure out who they are and how they want to show up in the world. And the best way for me to do that is through working with core values. And that's the, that's through the little teaser I put out there at the very beginning of the episode. That's the <laughs> subject that we're going to talk about today is core values, which is, I would say that it's not maybe a mainstream thought as far as like something you don't hear about it a lot, which is why I'm once again, super excited to have you on the episode today. So can you take a minute and maybe describe even what core values are and why they're even important for people to even to pay attention today with this episode? Well, Randy, I think that if I say something to the effect of every decision you've ever made, every tear you've ever shed, ever, every argument you've ever had every relationship that's ever gone well or sour, <laughs> every job you've ever had has every single thing you've ever done has either been affected by as a result of, or has stepped on either honored or dishonored one of your core values. It's that baked in. It's that fundamental to who you are. It truly is understanding the non-negotiables that are in your life are, are that important. That's why we need to look at them. When we're very small, like when you when we start talking about it and we get to the nitty gritty, when you hear what mine are, you'll understand why I say this. My mother said, oh, you were the definition of a strong, strong-willed child. I had no idea what to do with you. <laughs> and in a minute, I'll share why. But these are, the, and we do hear a lot about it. And I'm in the Maxwell team, right? So we have a lot of talk about character and the way we use values in our character and the things that we stand for. But as you and I will discuss, there's a difference between external values or principles and the things that are inside us. So when I define it, I say these are not business values and I do not teach people to align with business values. These are, these are not mission and vision. These are what makes you who you are. So they are the principles and the priorities that guide your actions. They are the, the, the fundamental convictions, your non-negotiables that allow you to navigate whatever comes at you, high seas, heavy winds, earthquakes, whatever happens in your personal life with your identity and authority intact right in the forefront. And when you know who you are, it is amazing. You know people like this. I mean, I know you do. There are some people who just don't have a problem knowing who they are. And I, I wish we could all be that way. I wish I had been that way. And it's there's no shame in not being that way. It's just that we've been nurtured in a specific environment that tells us that who we are wired to be is either not enough or not okay. And we need to do something different. And then we take that on for ourselves, which is what I did. I tried to follow all the rules and fit inside the box and whatever box that may be <laughs> and um, be the good girl, be the nice girl, be whatever it is. And um, that's, that's why it's important because it's a conversation that we're having kind of up here at the high level regarding business, regarding character. But if we don't look from the, if we work from the outside in, it's going to take forever. And we talk about this. I need to change my behavior. I need to change a habit. That's nice. But let's talk about where we change those. We change those in the, in our hearts and in our heads. So that's why it's a very important conversation. And that's why I invited you to come on the show because I 100% believe that myself, right? I, I talk about a lot on the podcast that our outside, I call it the 3D world, right? The, our outside environment is really a reflection of what's going on on the inside. And if we don't have, number one, the awareness Mm -hmm. you can't take the proper steps. I don't know if that's the right way to put it or not, but anyways, mm -hmm. you can't take the proper actions in your 3d world to get your environment where you need it to be. But it all starts on the inside. It's not, it's not on the outside. I know that's maybe hard for some people to, to comprehend, but that's been my experience. And so that's where mm -hmm. I'm so 
adamant about speaking about it myself, but then bringing on guests that talk about the same subject, but in a different way. That's mm -hmm. where this whole core values conversation is going to be a little bit of, of a different spin than what maybe people have listened to or heard me talk about here on the podcast, which is why I'm super excited. So our, so the question that's going off in my mind, are, are core values learned or are core, core values literally, you mean it like you mentioned hardwiring, like it's to me, that just means mm -hmm. like from birth, right? Is it more of a, you've been born with them or is it something that you pick up and, and gather along your way in your journey, even as little as, you know, no, no matter how old you are at, at any certain point? Well, the disclaimer is I am not a psychiatrist. I am not a psychologist. I am yeah, nor a am human. I. By the way, folks, nor <laughs> am I. So yeah. <laughs> I believe, and the people I have worked with, I have seen that these are hardwired. I think that my core values are hardwired. I think that they are refined through environment. I think that they are, um, and, and quite honestly, that things will, as we start uncovering them, will think we're looking at one thing. And then when we realize just like, you know, you might have a rock and you, somebody who knows what they're looking at with that rock knows what to chip away to find the diamond underneath or the ruby, or uh, there are things that when you mine them, minerals that you mine or gems that you mine may not look like what we assume they are going to look like once they are mined, cut, polished, everything. And so the process of uncovering our core values is a little bit like that. It's like understanding how to, my son used to love to do this. He would, uh, you know, you go to these little places where they have this, the, the sluicy things where you, you dump your, your rocks and, and sand and everything and the water, you let them, it's almost like mining, a gem mining, you know, you let the water go by and, and he would be so excited if he'd find something that was really pretty. And I'm like, they're all just rocks, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but he loves minerals and rocks and, and he has books and books on them. And, when we do that, we're able, he sees things that I don't see, right? So when mm -hmm. we do that and we start looking and say, okay, well, I think this is granite, you know, but then when you start chipping away at it, you realize, wait a minute, there's obsidian underneath. Wait a minute. There's, you know, so I have, I'm, I love all the different analogies, but when we do that, we can see. And so it may sound and feel a little bit like they're changing over time as we become, use the word aware, as we become more and more aware of Number one, the environment that we were raised in, the belief systems that we have accepted, the like the environment would be the conditioning that we have. And then being able to say, what do I not need anymore? What serves me? What doesn't serve me? And the more awareness we get, the more dialed in we get on what our core values actually are. So I'm sure that somebody's out there listening and says, no, Andrea, you're wrong. And that's okay. I don't need to be right. This is how I teach it. This is what I know helps people. And um, figuring out what they are for each individual person is a unique experience. I have noticed that they are, like I said, I'm a disc behavioral analysis. I have noticed that, and this was generated by a question from a workshop. Most people have um, some that we're, we'll talk about the ones that you think you might have. Um, but we do tend to have core values that, and I do this with my clients, that are kind of layered with or overlap with the types of person personality we might have. For instance, someone with a DISC personality that's very people oriented is going to have more likely going to have core values that are more people or a more relationship oriented. Whereas someone who's very task and reserved like a C might have core values that are more internal or individualistic or task related or results oriented rather than process oriented, relationship oriented. So there's ways that we can look at them. And when I work with clients and layer their disc and their core values together, it just gives them, I love the word 3D world. It gives them a very 3D view of who they are and how they communicate. So I love that as well. So thank you for sharing that. So I would love to just start to unpack the idea of if people are listening to this for the first time, you can even treat myself, right? So I've done a little bit of study prior to this interview. So I'm, I'm a little bit familiar with the process and a little bit familiar with things. But if someone is brand new listening to this, you mentioned about the box, like the, the self-imposed box that we're kind of put in as whether mm -hmm. it's children or even as adults, right? You go to work and it's like, mm -hmm. you're just put in this box and you know that it's not the right box. You know, it's not for you. It's like you mentioned that you're, you know, a little bit more, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I forget exactly what you said, but as far as pushing the outer limits of the box, right? You're, you're just more, uh, 
trying to get more and do more right with your life. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm the same way. I'm a, I'm not afraid to be a little contrarian with the basic normal premises of life, right? So that <laughs> I felt like I've been in a box most of my life. Mm-hmm. How do I break free from that? How do I start unpacking and start digging in? You mentioned that you will, you might have an initial thought of what your core values are, but then mm-hmm. you might evolve over time as you get a little bit more clarity of the awareness Help me start the process. Help me think through uh, the unpacking of discovering what my potential core values are. Yeah. And you mentioned doing some study. You actually have walked through the, at least the modules of the course that I offer, but I also have a free download that kind of gives you an idea of how to do that. But I will say that this has been going on for me since 19, at least 1994 or 95. So 29 or 30 years with the Franklin Covey system. Like I said, I, I started paying attention to Stephen Covey back then and I have my initial um, sheet of governing values is what Covey called them. And there are many things that are outside of me. There are things that seem intangible, like peace and tranquility, self-control is a little bit of mine, um, honesty and transparency and friendship, nature, creativity. But the the top one for me was freedom. Well, looking back at my 27-year-old self and saying, that's nice. Freedom from what, right? It's like freedom, money, freedom, no job, that kind of thing. It's like, well, that's pretty naive and immature. But those things are still important to me now. But when I start looking, when I'm working with someone, for instance, I have a client who is a a fairly successful entrepreneur. She's doing really well. And she just knew that there was something more. So I would say to you, if you have an area of your life that you feel, um, there's, there's some chafing, right? It's like something's rubbing wrong. Something's rubbing you wrong. Or there's a, a consistent, I'm not satisfied with this, or it's just not good enough. Or if you have what I would call cognitive dissonance, where you have two separate thoughts that are constantly coming against each other, and you're trying to live out one because you think it's the right thing to do. When you start, that's what a box is, Randy. When, when we live out something or embrace something because we have an idea that there's something outside of us, like you talk about 3D world, that is the best way to do something. That disempowers us. It puts us in a box and makes it so that we have no authority, right? I like to talk about transformational leadership means I'm taking you or helping you move from being disempowered acting with the assumptions or beliefs that you've accepted because you haven't developed a clear understanding of your own to empowered or impactful where you let go of imitating other people's principles and priorities to defining your own, which is sustainable. Staying inside other people's, I'm just going to use myself as an example. I was raised in Southern evangelical culture, right? Women are not leaders. Women are not supposed to be opinionated. We're supposed to be sweet all the time. I'm a pastor's wife. I'm a missionary kid. There's a lot of expectations on this poor woman over here. And it's hard to live up to those, especially when you're born with ideas that are constantly coming out, when you're born with leadership skills, when you're born with just being a natural in front of people kind of person, when you're born with this idea that you know, you talked about a contrarian. I'm a natural critical thinker. I am a natural deconstructionist. And all of those things I had to set aside and personally, quote, dishonor, put them inside a box in order to get a job, <laughs> in order to uh, fit into my church, in order to have people not criticize me, right? It those things are important to us. Being able to fit in is important to us. And when we feel like being who we are is not a way to do that, then we climb inside a box. I mean, some people are put there to start with, but most of the time when we're adults, we've done it to ourselves and we're perpetuating it. And it's not until somebody comes along and kicks that box or pokes a hole in it and we see light come shining and say, whoa, wait, what is that? Right? When things like that happen, for instance, I put in the work to have a higher job description than what I had. And when I asked for it, I got lots of pushback. I was doing the work. I was doing it. (laughs) I was doing it, doing it, doing it. And I was not getting paid for it. And I was not getting recognition. And I asked for it. And I finally, finally got the, yes, we'll do that, but we can't give you a pay raise. Why not? 
Well, because then you would be making more than the other people who've been doing this same job description for the last three years. And I'm like, but I've been doing this job description for the last three years. I just didn't have it on paper. Well, you know, it's those kinds of things. When I say somebody's kick in the box, it's like, that was a kick in the box. I like drove home that day from work, banging the steering wheel, screaming at the top of my lungs, like nobody's ever going to tell me how much money I can make ever in my life again. If I choose to take a job with that salary, that's going to be my choice, but I am never going to be in a position where I don't have a choice again because I wasn't ready to quit my job at the time. And, you know, granted when you're in bigger organizations that happens, but when if you find yourself in a situation with responsibility and no authority or constantly compromising what you think your non-negotiables are, we're going to talk about yours in just a second. But for me, my top one is freedom of thought. So if you're consistently telling me that my ideas are no good or that I, that, and being able to act on those, right? <laughs> I need to be able to think for myself. I need to be able to take what you say and and put it in there and bang it around and rip it apart and figure out if I want to believe it or not. And I had all my life allowed other things to come in and say, well, this is the authority and this is how it works. And this is what we're going to do in my spiritual life, in my business life. It, you know, it's like I even took a job one time promising them I would start within six months my MBA. and because they wanted me to have an MBA. Well, then I got into the job and realized I hated it. And I thought, well, pff, I'm not keeping that promise. Be because, you know, we do these things, Randy, that put limits on ourselves. You know, we talk about a box, but if, if in any way you are limiting your potential based on someone else's idea of what you're supposed to be, that's where you're going to have trouble. So these are the people I love working with, helping them understand the limits they've placed on their, themselves. I had a client last week, after coaching back and forth, she looked at me and she said, oh my gosh, I'm the biggest culprit. I said, yes, <laughs> you are the biggest culprit. You are the one that is allowing other people to dishonor your core values. But if you don't know what they are, Randy, how do you know who the culprit is? So I think I've talked around that answer. I hope I answered it. <laughs> yeah, you did great. You did great. So the word that's coming to my mind is how much, or the question like maybe is, is courage is how much courage. So it's like when you discovered for yourself and you can uh, maybe talk about maybe some of the other clients you worked with as well, but it's that, so it's like, as you start to uh, push up against the box, right. And it's like, but you've got to have the courage to look outside the box or mm -hmm. see the light coming in or have, I remember when I had my moment, when I realized that the world that I had been living in I don't want, it just wasn't true. It just wasn't what I was working towards. Wasn't what I thought it was, what it was going to be at the end of the day. When I had my moment, like you said, it, you said for yourself, it's like you, you, you flat out said, I'm not going to ever have this restriction on my income ever again. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how it was for me for as I was like, I'm never going to have somebody else is going to have authority over what I can do when I can do it, how I can do it. I had a similar situation, I guess is the mm. point I'm trying to make, mm -hmm. but then I had the courage to go mm. out and seek the answers, right? Go mm -hmm. out and seek the, cause it does, it's going to be a totally different experience than, than living inside the box. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that a little bit as far as the courage that it takes to kind of, to get yourself outside of that? Yeah, because I want to talk about what courage is and what safety is, right? Mm, because please. we, we think that having a job or having a, a regular salary with benefits, regular vacation time, a place to be on a regular, you know, re consistency. We confuse consistency with safety. And I'm not saying that you need to go out, please, dear listener, do not think that I'm telling you that you have to go out and quit your job or you have to go out and be an entrepreneur. Because when I first started, I thought everybody needed to be entrepreneurs. <laughs> it's like, take it to the man, right? Stick it to the man. <laughs> um, but that's how we grow, right? It's like we we have these pendulum swings of growth. But when we confuse consistency with safety, that's when we get a, maybe a lullaby effect is a really good way to talk about it. It's like we just kind of get lullabied into this idea that it's okay to be where we are. And when you have a moment like that, that kind of defines, wait a minute, this isn't as safe as I thought it was. It's just consistent. And you see the sneer on my face. It's consistently not good. It's consistently something I don't want. It 
it literally breaks my heart when people say, yeah, tomorrow's Monday. <laughs> I don't want to go to work. It's like, well, then why are you doing this? This is, you're spending way too much time there. And, you know, we need to find you something else. And it might mean that we have to totally turn our entire life upside down in order to find whatever it is. But it also might be that you just need to be on a different team in your organization. I mean, it could be something as simple as that, or it could be something as simple as changing your mindset. But the difference between safety and and then courage is that it it takes a lot more courage to stay where you are and trust somebody else to meet all of your needs than it does to trust yourself. I know that sounds counterintuitive and it sounds like, yeah, it's really nice you can say that, lady. I know it's really nice for you to be able to say those things. But we will hit, if you don't hit a place where the pain of staying where you are is worse than the pain of doing something new, then you won't ever change. That's just how we're wired as humans. This is, and, and that's the culture we live in. So when we talk about courage, courage is being willing to do something different in order to get a better result. And if you're that miserable <laughs> where you are, I mean, if you're not miserable at all, then we have a totally different conversation. But if you're miserable where you are, and many of the people I talk to are miserable, then you this, you owe it to yourself to at least see what, to pop the lid and to see what's out there. And I mean, I grew up 70s, 80s playing that whack-a-mole game, you know, where, mm -hmm. and I grew up in Asia. So it's like wonderful little um, uh, proverbs like the tallest blade of grass is cut first. So you don't want to stick your head up there, you know, which is one of the reasons why I say stand tall and own it, because it's okay to put yourself out there and risk it just a minute, you know, just to say, you, you'll be surprised how many other blades of grass will jump up there with you. And you'd be surprised how many people will stand with you in certain areas. It may mean that you need to switch everything about yourself. It may mean you just need to switch a mindset. But having courage is the ability to do what is best for you and those around you. Because not if, if you're limiting yourself, then you are not giving us what you were created to be. So you're not bringing to the table who you were created to, and designed to be. Because if I say you're, we're all hardwired and designed, designed to be a certain way, there's a reason. And I have a responsibility to bring that, that gift to the table. And if I'm not doing it, then I am doing you a disservice, not just me. And I think when we start to take those kinds of things out, off of the, oh, I just need to have courage and stand up for myself and realize it's not just me. If you're a parent, if you are a teammate, if you are any kind of a leader, you owe it to those around you to be able to show up the very best that you can because that's what they need from you absolutely every single time. And that's why we're going to dive deeper into these core values because that's what the world needs, right? The world mm -hmm. needs you to show up, show up with your gifts everywhere. Each one of us is unique. And if you don't understand what those gifts are, it's going to be hard, obviously, to go out there and to make an impact in the world. And everyone in your surroundings at this point, folks, needs you, right? And they mm. need you to continue to grow. You said you've got a thirst for growth in your own life. And I would say that I have the same thing. I'm always trying to continuously add to the toolbox something else that I can use to, to just become a little better each day. That's kind of the goal, uh, whether it's conversations like this or reading a book or listening to another podcast or whatever it is, just a little bit each day. So let's go a little bit deeper into the core values. I would love for you to maybe give us some examples of what those are, whether you share uh, your own or, or something, you know, I know you've got a list and you mentioned uh, as far as the, the um, course and classes that you sure. uh, teach that you've, you've got a, a list that's a long list of different potential core values and some will resonate with others and some won't, right? But that's the whole idea of pinpointing it down to who it is and who you are. So anyways, yeah, take a couple minutes here and let's, let's start going a little deeper into the core values themselves. Yeah. Um, the, a couple things to, to point out is that core values are not visible, right? And you've learned a little bit of this already. These are not things that are outside us and they are, what is the word I would use? They are invisible yet their impact is visible. For instance, my 
desire for, I thought it was freedom, but it turns out it's really more freedom of thought or autonomy of thought. And evidently there's an action piece that, so I'm still going deeper on mine, but most people think they know what they are. And like I was, I love saying hundred percent of the people that come to me think they know their core values and hundred percent of the people are wrong. So, you know, it's just, we don't know ourselves as well as we think we do. And even people who live in alignment or honor their core values may not know how to articulate them. And so this is also a good process for them. But being able to say these are intangible but have documentable effects are things like um, I have quite a few clients who respect as their top core value. Uh, mine is freedom of thought. Don't tell me what to think. <laughs> So, you know, I'm, I'm big on critical thinking. I have one client who said her top core value was dependability. And I was like, well, that's interesting because I'm not necessarily, I don't know that that's one of my core values. It's one of those things that I shame myself with because I don't find that I am as dependable as I'd like to be. So they're intangible, but there are things that when we don't honor them, we notice, right? When someone's core value of respect is dishonored, we notice. When, um, uh, when someone's core value of dependability, hers, like if she wants to be dependable and she wants other be people to be dependable, I can't count on you, we're out. You know, like I said, my husband is like, you lie to me, mm -mm, we have a problem. Um, they're also inherent, meaning they're your internal compass. These are your non-negotiables. When you start walking through the exercise and saying, you know, you get a brain dump and you pull them all together and you start weeding them out, you'll realize, okay, I can live without that one, or I can live without that one, or it doesn't really matter to me if this is for someone else. It, it matters that it, it ha happens for me. Well, that may not be a core value, right? Because they're also inspirational. They bring you joy. These are the things. To, and if you want to look at the opposite side of that, whatever angers you the most is probably a core value that's being stepped on, right? So if you look mm. back over the last week or two or three and say, this, I got really, really, really angry about this, or I get angry about this every day. <laughs> right? If you're getting angry about something every day, we really need to talk. But it's because you're probably not honoring a core value. The other piece is they are what I call reciprocal. And I mentioned that a minute ago. When I say I want freedom of thought, I want it for you too, Randy. It's, it's just as important for you to be able to think for yourself. I'm not going to tell you what to think. I might, my third core value is belonging. So I might want us to agree on something, but it is more important for me that you think for yourself and that you arrive at your own conclusions. If, if for some reason we reach the same conclusion, that's bonus, right? That's icing on the cake. But I want for you the same as I want for me. If respect is a top core value, or I say it is, but I don't actually respect you. I just want you to respect me. That's narcissism, right? So that's a really good way to see where the differences lie. The other piece to remember is that they're not, and I, you've said this before, or we've mentioned it, is they're not outside you. They're not your morals and your ethics. These are subjective. They're based on your core values. They're not your beliefs. Beliefs are changeable. This is an unpopular opinion, <laughs> but they are. Ask anybody who switched political parties or anybody who's changed uh, a religion. Um, but again, they're not external. So anything that's external, I'm usually going to push back on and usually say that that's really more of a, a, a governing value or a principle that we have. When we look at core values, these are also things that um, when you look at the big picture for yourself, you'll be able to see how things kind of play out for you. And if you look back through your employment history or your relationship history, you'll see certain patterns popping up. Now, when you talk about a list, I have in the packet or the, the handouts that come with um, the course, what is it, a three page? Like I, I actually pulled it up here. One, two, it's actually three, yeah, three pages, single spaced, four columns of words that in alphabetical order that work. Um, things like, Fun, encouragement, there's enchantment is on there, availability, devotion, comfort, looking for how, how just even just to like prime the pump, so to speak, right? I grew up in Korea with, we had a well outside our house and we had a pump, an old fashioned pump. And every spring we had to like prime it by pouring water in there. So these words are not definitive. You could actually do your own search. And what I tell people is, Use this or don't use it because there's an exercise you walk through that you think about what other people would say about you. 
because a lot of times when we look at ourselves from other people's perspectives, we get a a little bit of a clearer view on some things. Um, But I say use these as idea words so that you can then figure out with your own definition. It may be that you end up with 10 or 20 and you've got five or six non-negotiables, but the other words might define some of those words. So you get to define your own. You don't have to use a Google definition. I actually had a client um, two weeks ago say, so I put in chat GPT (laughs) and she used AI to help her define that. And then she just, because she just used it as a prompt. And I thought, how smart is that to help figure out what, how you want to define it? Because the really nice thing, Randy, is when we know what ours are, we can then use them, and integrate them into how we show up in the world. So starting with these idea worlds, I mean, even just, yeah, I still, I'm looking at this and still thinking how, why would freshness be somebody's core value? But it could be that they need fresh ideas every day. So um, so I'm curious to know, since you've walked through it, you haven't done all of the modules. You've just listened to stuff, right? We're going to we're gonna tell everybody he has not walked through the entire course. Not the entire course, but no. I have I have listened to it, like you said, yes. Yeah, so what, what idea words really stood out to you that you feel like might be a good starting place? So I feel like one of my main core values is integrity. Mm -hmm. I just love, I have an issue with folks that don't follow through with what they say or don't say what they mean. So integrity is, is really important to me personally. Mm -hmm. That's been, uh, I have, I just haven't put put it in the term of a core value, I guess. I just Mm -hmm. said, that's just a word that resonates with me. I mentioned, uh, where we talked about, I thought family would be, but that is kind of the opposite, meaning it's on the outside versus Mm -hmm. something that's on the inside. So I have to almost rethink that a little bit. Maybe it's more of the feeling of love Mm. or support. No, maybe that's not even, uh, maybe you could help me with that. Is there (laughs) any way? Yeah. Yeah. Help me. Yeah. I I love this. Help me. Yeah. Help me through that as far as, cause so family, right. I'm so passionate about my family, my core Mm. family. Mm -hmm. But obviously, as you mentioned, it's on the outside of me. How do I kind of twist that around to think more from an internal standpoint? Tell me what are some feelings you have associated with your family? I just love every, I just love them. Meaning I just, I get excited to see them do life, right? Uh, When they come around, when they're with me, Um, I've just always felt, so there's, uh, I've got three children and a wife and my wife. Uh, We also now have a grandson. So to me, I, I consider it like a core six of us mm-hmm. total. Mm-hmm. I just feel, I feel like we're a unit, right? We're trying to just navigate life as a unit, uh, support uh, each other. I, I always am talking about that with our family. Like we're always there to support the Wilsons. We'll support each other. Uh, whether we disagree with each other, that's, that's, that's another whole another subject. But if we need something, we'll always be there. Um, I don't know if that's helpful or not. Please ask any other questions. If, if Yeah. So I wrote a couple of, of words down. Um, okay. I wrote down wonder. Because mm-hmm. um, you like to see them become who they are, right? So you are watching and learning and, and curiosity. You're curious. Um, and these don't need to be your words, right? It's just like, this no, is what I, I, I love hear. That. So I am very curious just in, in general in life. But yeah, I'm very curious with my family as well. I'm, I'm curious what, what each day, each week, right? Each decision, right? We all have decisions to make. And right? you're just curious, huh, I wonder where that's going to take them, <laughs> right? I, it's not for me to decide, but at the same time, huh, I wonder what that's going to, what that's going to yeah, lead so into. I throw that one out there for you to consider. Like curiosity <laughs> might be one of them. I never even thought about that, but you're right. As a podcast host, it's kind of playing out as well. Um, I also wrote down belonging because this is your core six, right? These are the people that you belong to. This is your, you know, these are your ride or die. Um, you're going to support them. Like use the word support. I also wrote mm-hmm. legacy, right? Because you're making an impact. So you're actually looking at what what legacy am I leaving behind? I love that because yeah. I, I talk about that with my wife a lot that I, mm-hmm. I'm thinking generationally. It's yeah. like I'm trying to break. Cycles. So the, the yeah. So the limiting mm-hmm. beliefs that the Wilsons have been up to this point, up to me. I mean, because I can't yeah. obviously impact my father and, and beyond mm-hmm. or, or past, right? But I can impact They, they did my what son. they could do with what they had. Yeah. Now you have right. what so you I'm have and you're going to do different. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm hoping. So yeah, legacy. That's, I never, I, I use that term and I say that, but I never really consider that more of a core value. That's, that's super cool. I like that as well. So can I have more than three? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but I, I have like some I have others. Like I also wrote oh. down identity. 
because there's an identity involved there, but that may be part of a definition of one. And I wrote community because you're building your own community. Um, But if two of those right away, curiosity and legacy really pop up, this is, this is why I love doing the coaching piece of this work because I hear things when people speak that they may not hear. And yeah. it's very valuable to have somebody to bounce things off of sometimes. Somebody asked me, um, you know, what's the biggest crowd you've ever spoken to? And I'm like, it's not about the big crowd. I want the back and forth, right? So mm-hmm. I love doing workshops and I love working individually and in group settings with people to figure these things out. But um, but I would say, yeah, take a look at those legacy and curiosity ones because, um, I mean, your face like flushed when you talked about it. It already is. I can feel my temperature in my face right now. Is, is, yeah. yeah so 100%, that tells me that's right. really, our body tells us things, right, Randy? So mm-hmm. those are things that really matter to you. And when you start defining what that means, it's not just legacy, especially. It's not just what you want to leave behind. You're not looking for Randy Wilson leaves a mark on the world and therefore everybody thinks he's amazing. You talked about generational. You want to change yeah. patterns. So it's this content that I'm producing, right? Trying to do as well as I can out there in the world. I'm, I'm thinking multiple, some, somewhere, somehow, right? Yeah. A Wilson or or whatever, a relation of some kind. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, who was that guy back in... 2000 and whatever we are, 24. Yeah. Who where did that we get guy? this? Yeah. That that's, I'm thinking about that Yeah, right, right now. So yeah, that's And that's cool. what, so here's when I say it's like hardwired for you. It's, it's probably always been a motivator for you and you just weren't honoring it. Like if whatever watershed mm-hmm. moment you had, when you said, this is not what I want anymore, maybe that was the biggest one that wasn't being honored. Right. Because it's hardwired in there and some of these things come from our quote, ancestors, like our parents or our grandparents, but they weren't honored in them either, right? So when we, like my mother always talked about breaking the cycle of certain things. And so I, and she would say to me, and I still, you know, I still kind of get choked up sometimes. She would say, fly, be free, you know, fly, mm. be free. And I, I look back on that now and I'm like, there's that word you know, free freedom. And so when, when we look at the way we speak, a lot of times the words that pop up, if we're having conversations about these things all the time, we have things that we think we're supposed to want, right? I'm supposed to want to be this way. I'm supposed to, and and it does bother me when people don't show up or follow through and I follow through, why can't they? But the reality is it's because you're trying to build a legacy and you're trying to teach them to build a legacy. That's why that whole business of follow through and, or integrity actually really bothers you. So when, when we can see what these things are, it releases us from the judgment of ourselves and other people. It helps us build better boundaries as we integrate them into our work. You're already starting into starting to integrate all of this into your work and you didn't even realize it, right? You were honoring yeah. a core value doing this new work. And it might be that you refine that better, but uh, your your reaction tells me that that's actually probably one of them. So the, the question that I had then was, you mentioned at the very beginning that once you discover your core values and then like you almost like, I'm trying to think of even how I want to say it or how I'm trying to think back how you said it exactly. But as far as like you determine your non-negotiables, meaning mm-hmm. you don't, yeah. So it almost creates boundaries where you don't let people or influences or whatever impede on the decisions that you're making moving forward. Mm-hmm. Talk about the importance of that, the, the non-negotiable piece when you discover your core values. Right. Well, I'm going to take the word almost out of your sentence. Okay. There is no almost so, yeah. create boundaries. It creates natural boundaries. Nice. Have I shared my house analogy with you? I, I don't love recall. sharing this. Please. I Perfect. live on three quarters of an acre, which to me was like a lot of land. And I, but I'm on a 45 mile an hour road out in the country. I can see, I can see the Shenandoah, I mean, the Blue Ridge Mountains um, in the background. And so it's really pretty out here, but it's a 45 mile an hour road. And when we moved into this house, my son was two and a half. And so I actually planted some forsythia bushes, the really pretty yellow ones that bloom in the spring right up near the road. And I planted them four or five feet from the road. That, that, that was just way too close <laughs> because 10 years down the road, we're still working, trying to keep the forsythias from growing into the road. And we live on a curve and the postman is like, can you trim them back? Because I nearly got hit again when I was trying to put something in your mailbox. 
But people on in my neighborhood walk, even though we don't have sidewalks, everybody walks, we all walk on the side of the road. And people now walk inside my forsythia bushes instead of on the other side, because it isn't safe to walk on the other side. They might switch the side of the road, but I, it doesn't bother me that they walk inside that on my property line, right? It's fine. Nobody walks up to my front door and just walks in. They walk up, if they, if they even walk up to my front door, they knock or they ring the doorbell that doesn't work. That's how they get to my house, right? The only time anybody comes in my house is if I open the door and let them in, okay? So when I talk about natural boundaries, when I have my prime, I call them primary core values. The, the gentleman I was speaking with the other day called them subcategories, right? It's like, I have this category and subcategories underneath it. It's like, that's great. However you want to describe it, I call them primary and secondary because the primary ones are my house. You don't come in my house unless I invite you in my house. My secondary ones are out there where people have to walk inside my forsythias in order to not get hit by the big car that's going by, the big truck that's going by in the country. And so what I help people do is I help them figure out what are the absolute non-negotiables. And when you settle in on those, you literally no longer feel defensive about who you are, because it's like having the door that's closed on your house. We think, and we talk a lot about setting boundaries out here where don't cross this boundary with me. And the reality is don't treat me that way. When people notice that, you know, when they don't know me at all and they ask me things like, wouldn't you agree that such and such, <laughs> I just, I automatically just kind of look at them and smile. It's like, yeah, I'm not answering that. Um, but my husband has learned to say, what do you think about this? And then as I get into conversation with people, I let them know and I express myself in ways that lets them know that I am a free thinker. And I'm going to think the way I'm going to think. It's autonomy of thought. But I also encourage that in them. I say, well, what do you think about this, right? And so it's a gracious, less defensive way of setting boundaries that they know they don't need to tell me what to think. Because if they're going to tell me what to think, our conversation is over. But I don't need to be rude about it. And I don't need, I don't even, because I'm so comfortable in that now, I just, I, a lot of times I'll just shrug my, shrug my shoulders and say, okay. And it's like, no. <laughs> And so it gives you, when we talk about authority, it gives you the authority to set those boundaries internally, and then people will recognize them in you, whether you think they will or not. Because just like your house, they're going to recognize when the door is shut, right? My door is shut on that. It's like, I have a coach who's taught me to say, I'm not available for that conversation. Mm. You know, I'm just, I'm not available for that. And it doesn't even need, it, it doesn't even have to come out my mouth. It can just be in my head. I'm not available for this. Therefore, I don't have to take it on. So when it comes, when, when we go back to the very beginning of the conversation about being in a box or living by someone else's principles, even being able to inside my head say, I'm not available for that means I'm not living by anybody else's principles. My boundaries are clear. For me, my top core, my primary core values are freedom of thought, authenticity, which could mean very... <laughs> could mean any variety of things and belonging. So therefore I am going to think for myself, help you think for yourself. And I'm going to create a welcoming atmosphere while still being spunky. And I'm going to do my thing, but that's how I'm going to live this out. And for a woman who was told when I was younger, not, we don't all want to hear your opinion, Andrea, or, um, you're not the funny girl, please stop. Or, you know, those kinds of things or your opinion doesn't matter, or you wouldn't know any better, or you're not the authority here, or you're not the leader. For somebody who was told those things, I'm now able to, they're still in there, those tapes always play, but I'm able to push them aside and say, this is my house, <laughs> and this is who I am, and I don't let you in because you're not interested in my well-being. And I don't have to tell anybody that out loud. It's just like I can do it on my own. And it's a beautiful thing to watch when someone finally understands that they actually can set their own internal boundaries and yet still be open, vulnerable, and free with everybody else that they're around and gracious and kind. Um, it just, there's a, a steadiness that comes with it. There's a groundedness that comes with it. And that's what I love about it. Yes. And it's interesting that I have not learned this up until being and having discovered this with you, which is super fun. 
which leads me into a little bit of a pivot of, I know another passion project of yours is your podcast, right? Stand tall yes. and own it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would love for you to kind of, so you're giving back as much as possibly can as well, trying to help people comprehend and understand their core values, how setting these boundaries, not almost, but setting certain boundaries, <laughs> making <laughs> sure that people can take these, this information, right. And apply it into their own life. Talk a little bit about your podcast, uh, who it's for kind of the premise and, and what you're trying to do there, which, yeah, that's super cool as well. Sure. I'm actually uh, three years into it. And originally the first two years was called Intentional Optimists, Unconventional Leaders, because I wanted, I was in my learning and understanding phase of becoming, you know, letting go of who I was and becoming who I am. And I wanted to interview women that I considered to be leaders and show other women that they could also be leaders because we tend to think that people like you are leaders or people that look like you are leaders. And the the person who told me I wasn't going to get the raise was six, three blonde haired, blue eyed with an MBA kind of person, male. <laughs> and, you know, we, I wanted women at the time to understand that they are actually leaders. You can lead from wherever you are, whatever you do. And the first person we lead is ourselves. But after about two years of that, I realized I got to start applying this to myself. I got to actually, I have to pra practice what I preach. And as we grow, Randy, we do that, right? It's like the more we learn, the more we share. It's, it's, it's an unfortunate <laughs> thing that we have to do as, as, as leaders, thought leaders and, and teachers. And so when I realized what I wanted to do with it and how I wanted to show up for it, I, I changed it and rebranded it to stand tall and own it. And I started with um, just like that blade of grass, right? It's, it's be willing to stand up and be willing to, to be the one that you might get whack, whack a mold or you might get chopped off first, but it's okay. You will grow back. <laughs> and, um, being willing to be ourselves means that other people are being, are willing to be themselves. So I do some teaching on there. I share my, my stuff. I originally, I don't know about you, but I started a podcast thinking I could make money. Um, but I have come to understand that my podcast is the best way to deliver information to people. And it's, it, it, it's my, it, you're right. It's a free resource. It is full of teaching, good interviews. Sometimes it's fun stuff, um, interesting things. I've done an entire 10 episode series on the different types of personality test tools that I use, interviewing the coaches that I worked with, and then kind of sharing my own input on that. But I'm diving a little deeper into how we look at core values and intentional optimism. I did that at the very beginning of my other, re before I rebranded. And I think I'm going to, over the summer, I'm going to go deeper into what intentional optimism is because we start on the outside and want to change our behavior, but we have to change the inside. So now that I've kind of figured out how to teach people how to change the inside and I've done a lot of my own, it's time to revisit that and say, this is how we do what we do. So you get a lot in there. Um, and it's, I don't know. It's, it's what I got. <laughs> well, three years of doing it is a huge commitment. So congratulations on that. I've been a little bit more than a year so far for myself. And yeah. So as I mentioned at the very beginning to interview a fellow podcaster is always a lot of fun because you just, it's not hard, but it's not simple or it's simple, but it's not easy at there the same go. time. Yeah. Right? To show, yeah. I, I kind of had that backwards. I apologize, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's a ton of fun. I, I love the process. I assume you do as well for you to be able mm. to stay into it with three years, even through a little bit of a rebranding. I've, I call them pivots. I've pivoted yeah, a few times pivoted. with my podcast mm -hmm. yeah. with the message a few times. Uh, but as you kind of keep going, you just keep going and you kind of just, dis you discover your own voice and you just with some courage and with peeking outside the box, you kind of realize yeah. kind of how things are and how you things you want to be. And that's, that's where it's a lot of fun. Well, and to take it back to that concept, this, the analogy that I used for myself was I thought I was crawling out of this box to like be in a room or something. And the way I felt when I did some major deconstruction, reconstruction, right? Like figuring out what do I not need? What do I need? And how am I going to move forward? I felt like one of those animals they had rehab rehabilitated and was like opening the cage and letting them out in the wild. And I found myself in what felt like to be this big open expanse of this world that had so much more to offer me than I ever thought. And so many more places that I could actually make an impact than I ever imagined when I was limited, when I had 
put myself in there. So that's another piece of why I do the podcast the way I do. And you mentioned that this most recent one is a very minute, like taking it down to the small piece. It's like, what's the difference between a core value and a life principle? Because it is the question I get asked the most. And with every single client I work with, it's like, those things are on the outside. Your family is a big deal. But what we hear is through your family, you're creating a legacy. Our external principles are the vehicle that allow us to, and they're important and you need to figure them out, right? They're, they're just a different process and different things, but they allow us to live out our core values and do it in a way that is really us, right? Absolutely. Well, Andrea, this has been a super fun conversation. I knew it would be. I appreciate you sharing so much value with the listeners, with myself. I've learned a lot. So it's like you even took me through the exercise, right? And the whole curiosity and legacy, I'm going to really <laughs> ponder that, right? My One of the exercises I love to do is I, I, love, I love to journal. You'll hear me talking a lot on, on the episodes that I do. I love getting my thoughts out of my mind. And just mm -hmm. getting them down on paper. And trust me, I'm going to be journaling about that in the next yeah. few days to try to even get uncover that a little bit further. But I would Good. love you. You've shared a ton of wisdom, ton ton of fantastic things on this episode so far. But I just want to try to prod you just a little bit more. All right. Is there a nugget of wisdom or even a, just an inspirational message to leave the listeners with here as we begin to uh, bring this in for a close today? Sure. It's not going to surprise you when I say this, but I would encourage you, please, to think for yourself. Please think for yourself. You have the ability. You have the wisdom. You have the experience. If you don't have it, you know where to find it, but think for yourself. It is too easy to let other people tell us what we should think about all the different things going on in our world. And there's so much. And if you hop from one newscast to another, you're going to get a different opinion. So if you need to know, pull, pull them and then actually do your own research. Be willing to bet on yourself, right? When you think for yourself, you're willing to bet on yourself because you have so much more to offer, just like me coming out of that big expanse. I had so much more to offer and so much more that the world could offer me than I ever realized. So that is my dream for you is to just think for yourself. Love it. Mic drop right there. We're going <laughs> to, we're going to call it a wrap on that one. That was fantastic. But before we go, if folks are out there listening right now, it's like, okay, I need to figure out how to get in proximity to, to Andrea and learn more about the core values and all of those types of things. Tell us where is the best place for people to get to know you a little bit better. We mentioned the podcast more than mm -hmm. once. Uh, just what are the best places for people to connect with you and learn more about the uh, services and things that you have to offer? Yeah, I'm sure that you will put links in the show notes, but I if y'all are like, if you're out running or you're driving in your car, don't, don't do anything. Um, <laughs> you can find me at theintentionaloptimist.com and LinkedIn and Instagram are where I spend most of my time. And I, that's my same handle on LinkedIn and Instagram. So if you DM me there and let me know that you heard me on the Rich Mind podcast, I will know that you are not spamming me and I will connect, happy to connect, happy to have conversations. And again, if you go to my podcast, right? I mean, excuse me, my website, right above my head is a button that says free core values exercise. You click that button and that will give you a free downloadable that will tell you exactly how to walk through this process. If you need a little more help, Randy's got a link for you that will get you to the, the digital course. Um, but I am happy to work with you and I would, I would love to. Um, if you're in the Central Virginia area, let me know. Or if you have a team that you want me to work with, I can do that either on Zoom or I can fly out. I grew up overseas. Getting in a plane is wonderful for me. So um, I would love to work with you. And thank you so much. This has been a lovely opportunity. It's been a lot of fun. I knew it would be. And it's uh, led up, you know, my expectations have been met. Hopefully the folks listening, I, I told you at the very beginning, folks, that I appreciate you being here. I'm so grateful that you're taking your time out of your day, your busy day, your busy time, your busy schedule to spend a few minutes here with me on the Rich Mind Podcast. It means so much to me, uh, which is why I'm trying to find the best guest that I possibly can. And bringing Andrea on today has been so much fun. I've learned a lot uh, going through that core values a little bit for myself. I mean, I can feel my temperature rising thinking about it again as I speak. So it's been <laughs> So much fun for me to then go back and now I'm going to reflect on and I'm going to continuously try to grow into the person who I meant to be, which then is going to allow me to show up 
for you, the listener, or for my family, or for this legacy that I'm trying to build for my family moving forward. So if any of this message resonated with you today, I highly recommend that you get in contact with Andrea through the links that I'll have in the show notes as well. She mentioned them here on the podcast. If you're in a place where you're not able to write anything down, make sure you, you refer back to this episode. The only other thing that I would ask is if you found this valuable for yourself, share it with your family and friends. Uh, that's really the only way I have the ability to get the message out there to as many people as I possibly can. I'm trying to help you grow into the person that you're meant to be, realizing that it's your internal battles that are going on within you. Today, we talked about core values, which is a fantastic subject. Discovering what those are for you, applying them into your outside 3D world is going to completely change your life. It's done that for me. And it sounds like I've almost done that, not necessarily even knowing exactly what I was doing, but it's definitely going to allow me to see things a lot differently moving forward. And I would hope for that for you as well. So as we bring this in for a close, I appreciate you joining me here today. Uh, this has been a lot of fun and I look forward to bringing back guests like Andrea in the future. Maybe we have you back on maybe for a, a follow-up. You can go a little bit deeper and help me determine more of my core values. Is it, sure. that be something you'd be interested in? Absolutely. Fantastic. See, I put her on the spot now and now it's, now it's been recorded. I could put it out there in the world. <laughs> Anyhow, folks go out there, have a fantastic day. Focus on being great. Determine and work towards and work as hard as you can on your internal environment, your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs. And I'm telling you, if you do the hard work of doing that, first or as and well with your outside world, I'm telling you, your outside environment is going to change drastically because it has for me and I'm sure and I'm confident it will for you as well. Go out there. Have a great day. I look forward to bringing back the next guest again with you very soon. Until then, bye now.